now that we've got new owners are saying, okay, what are we going to do with all this stuff? Let's see if we can get the wood in like this. It's enormous. And I'll tell you something, poplar is one of my favorite sounding wood. But it's ugly, it's homemade scent. It really is. You know, big green open street. Yeah. That's what a normal poplar chunk looks like. Now, all you guys on the farm are talking about the tulip woods. This is tulip poplar. Yeah, yeah. That's tulip wood. He, what he did was he just selected them out where they were this color all the way through the board. And you can see there's not many of them. Maybe that one. You know? So yeah, sometimes you get some of them that are kind of a, a creamy white with a tinge of green in them. You know, they'll paint up really nice, but it's rare. is we bring in uh, wood in thousand board feet units and uh, store it up here. Leave it out there on the floor until we need to cut bodies. And you know we have a schedule that runs out three months ahead of time. Yeah. And you have to work in sit time, rest time uh, into your manufacturing process. So we'll, like if it's a mahogany mojo, we'll bring it in We'll chop it into a blank like this, only a little thicker. And then uh, we'll run it on the machine and set it over here. This is one of the heavier ones. Right. This you, is you African mahogany. But then we cut it like this and just yeah. leave it set. Yeah. And see what happens is by leaving it in here like this, it rests, relaxes, you know, it takes the stress out of the board so that when we take it to the next step, it doesn't right. shift around yeah. on us. So we'll come in here and you can see over here, there's a lot of night flies, there's a lot of flies, and they're sitting here, here's a dragonfly. You can see what it's, it's poplar body, so this would be a uh, Vernon Reed. And you know, we just throw the board down and carve it right out. And net blanks up here. Uh, a tragedy. It was one of my nicest pieces of quilt. For some reason, the neck went south on us, so I'm keeping this around to take that out. A lot of spruce from the uh, from the old factory in Massachusetts, but these are all you know, really not here early. Yeah, yeah. You know, the guys all want butterscotch. You know, and so you've got, and that's 200 bucks a month. Even for spruce? Yeah, solid one piece spruce. We've now figured out how to join it and get it through the oven without it. Yeah. You know, which now brings the cost down to 12 bucks. You know. But again, you know, you get one solid piece of wood that's a certain grain quality and a certain color, and it's very expensive. 
and I don't know if, yeah, this is Clara Walnut. I think I posted a picture of a dragonfly out of Clara Walnut. That's the one Rudy said that's mine. You know, it was going to be here for you guys to see. So you using multiple supplies for them? Yes. Yeah. Change them around? Or? Uh, the maple comes from a guy out in the Coa. Comes from a guy I work with out in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the spruce comes from the Pacific Northwest with a different guy. Um, the specialty wood guy, he's the guy that I love him to death. I've worked with him for years and he sells me all that cool stuff. But mahogany and uh, poplar and all of that, they could be local suppliers. So again, Terry, you cut the wood and then you let it sit in here for a while to kind of relax and yes, do its thing? Did. Yes, we do. And how long days. generally do you let them sit? About 45 days About 45 in here. Days. You know, in between steps. Anybody recognize the mode? Yeah. <laughs> Punch right through that. Oh, so the pickup sit directly into the bag. Yeah. 